Hello and welcome to this video where we look at how does Spark execute tasks on the cluster. And we're going to answer four basic questions. The first one is, what is a task? The second one is, how are tasks derived from a physical plan? The third one is, how are um, tasks scheduled in the cluster? And then finally, how or what happens when a task is executed on the worker? I hope you're curious, it's gonna be interesting. Let's get started. So as a short recap, um, let's explore the logical plan again. So we learned in the pre previous videos that we apply um, coarse grain transformations on RDDs to build up or assemble a logical plan, which is which consists of RDDs, partitions, and dependencies. There are wide and narrow dependencies, and if all of that doesn't make sense to you, please check out the previous videos. So in the logical plan, the RDDs and their dependencies to the parents make up a directed acyclic graph. And once we call an action on this logical plan, um, we transfer this um, or transform this logical plan into a physical plan. Now the physical plan consists of stages and tasks. And the physical plan is constructed in such a way that we scan backward from the last RDD um, and we consolidate all narrow dependencies into one single stage. We cut the borders or we cut stages at wide dependencies. So for example, in our logical plan here, we would scan backwards from the last RDD um, along all the narrow, uh, narrow dependencies. And once we experience a wide dependency, we cut it into a new stage. And that mechanism is called pipelining in Spark and is basically the fundamental optimization strategy for um, generating a physical plan. Now, finally, in the last video, we have seen that this physical plan basically is an optimized chain of map and reduce tasks, which relates to our first video to the map reduce paradigm, which is the very foundation of every Spark um, workload. Okay, having that understood, we can now ask what's a task and how can we execute this physical plan on the cluster. Now, a task is basically the unit of execution. Our workers only know how to execute a task. So to speak, all of the other components only live in the master. And then there is a task scheduler which can schedule tasks to the cluster. And the workers are quite dumb. They only can execute a task. So the task is the unit of execution once we trigger the um, evaluation of our workload. Now, having our physical plan, we may ask how can we derive tasks from this physical plan? And that goes in such a way that we start from the result stage, so from the last stage, and we scan backwards uh, along the narrow dependencies to find the stages. And for the result stage, we, first, we have, in this case, um, three partitions. So to evaluate our result stage, which yields the result of our action that we have called, um, we need to evaluate these three partitions. Now we can see that this first partition here, the red one, is evaluated by one function because these um, three transformations here are consolidated into one function, which evaluates the entire partition of that stage. So this is indeed a task of our result stage. And then we have also two more tasks for our result stage, which is for the green partition and for the blue partition. Now to evaluate this red partition, so this first task of the result stage, however, we need to evaluate all of the partitions of the red shuffle map stage as well, because we can see from the gray arrows here, arrows here that it has a dependency to all of the partitions of the parent stage. And the same is true for the for the green stage. So our red partition has also dependencies to all of the partitions of the green stage. And that's actually the definition of a white dependency that we need to evaluate all partitions of the parent stage before we can evaluate this partition of the result stage. Okay, I have tried to um, depict it here like this. So task one, T1, is task one of our result stage. It's a blue task. Um, and it has dependencies to all of the red partitions and all of the green partitions. Okay, let's move ahead to the next question. How are these tasks then scheduled on the cluster? 
Now imagine we have two workers, worker one and worker two, and our task scheduler goes ahead and, and says, okay, I, I would like to evaluate these blue tasks, but I, I can tell that I need to evaluate these partitions here first. So these tasks has to be uh, scheduled first. Now what it does is it schedules the red tasks on our workers and um, also it schedules the green tasks on our workers and they may up being scheduled like this. Um, and here you can see that these tasks may have different runtimes. So because they're dealing on partitions, the partitions don't have to have ev uh, equal sizes. So they may have dif different runtimes, but we would schedule them like this on our two workers. Now, what we can see is we don't need a synchronization be between the um, red and green tasks because they actually have no dependencies. So the green stage doesn't depend on the red stage and vice versa, but rather only the blue stage has dependencies to the green and red stages. Therefore, in order in order to evaluate the um, blue task, we need to wait until all of the tasks from the parent stages have completed because we have dependencies to all of its partitions. Therefore, we have this synchronization here, which is very similar or is actually the same as in MapReduce. Before we can schedule reduced tasks in MapReduce, we need to wait until all of the map tasks have been completed. And that synchronization is done by the master as well. All right, finally, the last question is how are tasks executed on the worker? And we saw it in MapReduce already, um, what's actually happening. And as I said before, the workers are quite dumb. They execute three simple steps for each task they have been assigned to. So the first thing is they read the map output files of the other workers, potentially of their own on their own disk, um, which the master told them to read. And the map output files are already sorted by key. So we can fetch um, sequential regions of the file. In this example, our work is assigned to process the um, data of the red input partition. So it only fetches the red regions of the map output files of the other workers, and it merges them such that um, equal keys end up in subsequent file regions. <clears throat> then the second step is to apply the function um, of the stage to each of the records for each of the keys. So we do and uh, we apply the function for each unique key in our input data set. And finally, we write a new map output file, which is um, again um, sorted by key and we end up with um, subsequent file regions such that um, subsequent workers and tasks can fetch the data for one key efficiently. So the workers basically only execute these three steps all the time they are evaluating a task. And that's the very same thing as we saw in MapReduce as well. Now, finally, if we're talking about a shuffle in Spark, you may wonder where's the shuffle happening? And the shuffle is actually a implicit concept um, when a worker fetches the output data of a parent task. So that's the shuffle here. It loads data from many output files from previously executed tasks and fetches them into the input inter iterator. This relates to white dependencies because we cut stages at white dependencies and therefore every stage leads to a shuffle. Okay, that's it for today. We have a profound understanding what happens from using coarse grain transformations on RDDs over a logical plan, over a physical plan, until um, stages and tasks. And we know how these tasks are scheduled on the cluster and what happens within um, each of the workers when, once it's assigned to evaluate a task. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoy this content, I would ask you to subscribe to this channel so you will get notified on new videos. Also, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And I hope to see you in here for the next video. I'm looking forward. Until then, bye-bye.